All right, welcome back, nerds. I hope you guys are bored out of your minds because I have the cure for such a thing. Are you kidding me? So today we're gonna be beating Tears of the Kingdom with only Lionel equipment. One of the strongest enemies in the game, about as difficult as a regular enemy in Bloodborne. So just to clarify a couple of questions, Lionel equipment means using only their bows and Lionel infused weapons. I can attach anything I wish to the arrows because I'm not crazy, nor do I care for such limitations. This is entertainment first, my torture makes me come. <laughs> Second, I'll also be using a couple of glitches along the way, and if you're thinking, well that's cheating, uh, you're right, but don't be so pissy about it. Just keep it in your pants and out of my comment section. I do not care. Anyways, on a serious note, I do hope you guys are enjoying or enjoy Tears of the Kingdom. I thought the game was incredible, so I wanted to do at least one challenge run before I put this game down for now. If you have other ideas for challenge runs, like maybe Zonite only devices or only using the sages, I mean, feel free to leave them in the comment section. But for now, without further ado, my name is Josh, also known as Gorgui, and I hope you enjoy. Our journey begins with a lengthy, boring tutorial. I have to basically go through all the necessary shrines again to acquire the necessary tools, such as Fuse, which will be very important once I get Lionel parts, but first I had to say hi to Zelda real quick. Now that's a lady right there. And I know some of you are wondering, well what about the starting enemies before your first Lionel? How are you going to take them down? I'm not really worried about that. Listen, I can gather whatever is necessary for the first Lionel, but once he's down, that's when the challenge really begins. After the shrines, I explored a bit to gather as many arrows as possible considering there are no glitches that, that I know of, uh, to duplicate them. I had about 120 at this point, so I had more than enough if I used them sparingly. Now once I was done with the Great Sky Island, it was down to the surface to gather the necessary weapons and of course, say hi to Pura. I know that everyone's going crazy over her, but I just want to remind everyone that the best waifu in the Zelda series, without question, is Midna, okay? Let's, let's just get that out of the way. Now, since this was my first challenge run in this game, I didn't really have much of a game plan here. I have no idea what I'm doing, so I just kind of winged it, much like this entire channel. I gathered some weapons first from around the area, and I then decided to visit the chasm below Hyrule Castle a little bit early to fight, specifically, a Black Horriblin. His horn gives us a plus 22 attack power on our weapons, which will be just enough to take down our first Red Lionel. And funny enough, you can just keep on going to face Ganondorf absurdly early from here, but I'm not ready yet. Let me be ragdolled by some Lionels first and then I'll be good to go. It's time to show you the duplication glitch, and if you're triggered by me cheating in a video game, look away for I would not want to sully your precious eyes. It's important to note here that I did not, I did not update my game before doing this challenge run. I'm on the very first version of Tears of the Kingdom when it came out. So this glitch may or may not work anymore, I have no idea. But here's how it works, it's super simple. You shield hop, and while you're in the air, grab five or less items, and then press B and Y at the same time. Bada bing bada boom, it's that easy. With 18 black horriblin horns, I fused them with as many weapons as I had as possible and made my way to the very first Lionel. Are you kidding me? Bam. Oh, how did I? No, I pressed the button, excuse me game. Ah, there we go. Now you're dead. Finally. Jeez. I could have sworn I was better at these fights earlier, but I guess not. With the Red Lionel extinct now, we have access to his horns and bow that I will abuse with the glitch maliciously. Now the problem here is that I don't know how to duplicate weapons or bows, nor do I care to look it up because I'm lazy. So what I did was steal a bunch of new spears and swords from these lovely guys within the depths because they're not going to need it, they're just standing there. But what I really want to find is a Silver Lionel, the most powerful variant in the game. But in order for one to spawn, there's a couple of hurdles you need to jump. According to my research, you need to first defeat all other versions of the Lionels, the red, the blue, and the white variants. Then you have to wait for a Blood Moon to pass, and a Silver Lionel will then spawn in the depths near the Tur- Wait, how does- Okay. Tukarok Sh- Tuk- Tukarok- Tukarok Shrine, which is next to the Horse Stable. Now, I already defeated the red one, so there's a check mark there. I also know that there's a White Lionel beneath Hyrule Castle, so that's where I opted to go next. It was a grueling fight, one that challenged me to my limits. <laughs> That was so easy. Wow. 
Yeah, I beat him on the second try. What I was talking about was the fight against my sheer stupidity, because I thought it would be a good idea to keep on going with Are only one heart. D uh, dumb? Yeah, how do you think that went? I was not happy, and I had to fight the White Lionel again. But now we have White Lionel equipment, so I shield stomped a couple dozen horns into my inventory, taped them to my weapons, and I'm ready to take on a Blue Lionel now. I have to say, the Claymore version was a bit difficult, mostly because I've never faced one before. But luckily I have years of experience overcoming challenging bosses in Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring, so this should be easy. Well, alright. I also want to note here that, design-wise, Blue Lionels are my favorite. I, I just love the purple fur. I think it works great with the blue skin. It's amazing. Uh, this was also in perfect timing, too, as a Blood Moon was rising once I defeated him. Not a mere 30 seconds later, and I was faced with the same Lionel, which I brutally took down as well. Now, at this point, all the requirements were met, and I now had access to the Silver Lionel. Now, in the depths, for some reason, Lionels have armor down there. So either I use blunt weapons to chip them like a sculptor, or bomb them like the proud American I am. I chose the latter. This fight took me a total of, I would say like 45 minutes, mostly because the spear threw me off. Again, I never went up against a spear version before, so it was a new experience. Fortunately, I learned quickly, and before I knew it, the strongest Lionel in the game went down. Unfortunately, there are no Golden Lionels in Tears of the Kingdom, to my knowledge, as far as I know. So this is the best equipment we're gonna get. Which, I'm saying it like it's a bad thing, like this is endgame equipment without question. I duped a crap ton of silver lino horns, as well as cleaned up the rest of the linos nearby for their bows, since I don't know how to duplicate them. I felt satisfied with five bows, three of which were the strongest version out there. Ladies and mostly gentlemen, according to my statistics, it's time for the boss gauntlet. Actually, let's get some new clothes first, because fashion is pretty important to me. Due to my time in the depths, I gathered a bunch of stray souls, enough to craft the dark tunic. And along with the Hylian pants, we are looking as fresh as a, a gothic strawberry. I don't even know where that came from, but there you go. I didn't go with any hoods because I wanted the locks to be free. Now, to make it to Hyrule Castle, that was my next goal, is going to be a bit difficult considering my stamina is nowhere near where it should be. And the reason I'm heading up to the castle is to collect some endgame weapons just to make sure I have the best of the best before I head below. I made it there by using the tower nearby and cooking some food they gave me extra stamina. Nothing to really show here, I just went looking for weapons and fused my silver lino horns onto it. That's pretty much it. It's time for The Descent. Not the movie, but the action. Which is a really good movie, by the way. The Descent, I highly recommend it. It's very creepy. So to get to this point, it took me about a full day's work. And I have to be honest, I thought the next part, which is the boss gauntlet, was going to be pretty easy. <laughs> no, actually, it was just as difficult, if not more so. It took me about a day and a half to do, because if I die- at least I die in one hit, first of all. Anything that touches me, I'm dead. And if I fail at any point before Ganondorf, I have to redo the whole thing. Normally, the Demon King's army is the only necessary fight for a playthrough, but because I didn't solve any of Hyrule's problems, I have to fight all the bosses down here. So, here's how it went. By far, the Demon King's army was the most annoying part of this run. The Bokoblins would not give me enough space at all to shoot my bomb arrows. Most of my deaths were caused by my poor calculations and lack of space, but I figured there was a better way. After watching a couple of speedruns on YouTube, it turns out rubies produce a much larger explosion of fire that helps take care of big crowds. I simply had to keep my distance and find openings, while also not being caught in the crossfire. It took me a while to find the sweet spot, but when I did, the rest was smooth sailing. The Lizophos were pretty easy, there weren't that many, and they stood together like an uncooked meat rack waiting to be seared, and I was the chef. There were even lesser Gibdos, and yeah, some of them are fast, but a couple of headshots cools them down, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. The Moblins were the easiest. Slow and dumb, much like people who watch this video and don't leave a like or subscribe. <laughs> now, the bosses themselves, some of them posed a problem. Kogera, fortunately, was not one of them. See, the first phase is nothing to write home about. The Lionel Bow shoots three arrows at a time, so it was easy to crack his weak spots. In the second phase, Kogera starts to summon tornadoes, which, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of tornadoes, not in real life, but in other video games, so this was nothing new to me. Now, considering I would have to redo the King's army if I died here, I did panic a little bit, but nothing a little maneuvering can't handle, and it was as easy as one, two, three. 
Marbled Goma, on the other hand, stumped me a couple of times, actually. See, normally, you use your Nobo to break his legs to access the obvious eyeball weakness. However, I did not have him here, so what I did was use Recall on all the explosive rocks. Wait for one of them to detonate on his head, and then use Ascend to reach the eye. And listen, Silver Lino weapons are absolutely busted. It took it, it, one cycle to reach the second phase. That's it. Which again, normally Marbled Goma will crawl on the ceiling and make things more difficult, but because there was no such ceiling, the same strategy works here too, just a couple of extra attacks to cycle through. Once I figured that out, it was pretty easy. Now from here, I beat the remaining bosses on my first try, because I am an expert gamer. One of my favorite bosses in the game, Mukturok, was next. Luckily, I had plenty of Opal to use here. I didn't duplicate any of them, I just had a bunch. And if you don't know, they produce a large explosion of water. It's a pretty good substitute without Sidon around. Uh, it does take two shots instead of one with Sidon, but again, I had plenty to spare, so it doesn't really matter. Plus, I also had some splash fruits just in case. But nonetheless, I poked him a few times and he went down. Queen Gibdo was next in line, another one of my favorites, and I saved up on electric projectiles just for her. I had six electric key swings, so I used those to make her vulnerable and then spear her face in. Now, once the second phase started, I felt a little risky, because I thought how I could use rubies to neutralize the regular Gibdos with the Demon King's army, so I wanted to test it here. Turns out, Queen Gibdo is susceptible to any elemental damage, and I used my extra rubies to take her out. I was pleasantly surprised. Up next was Seized Construct. This one took me a second to figure out, but I'm glad that all those bonflowers I duped will be put into good use. Basically, you bomb it, then you use a heavy sword to smack her against the wired ropes. That's pretty much it. It's exactly the same for the second phase too, like those extra arms are not gonna help. And lastly, before Ganon, we have Phantom Ganon. And at this point, I was not about to redo the bosses again, so I just bombed the crap out of him with rubies. I have 240 arrows at this point, I might as well use them. <laughs> Dude, that damage is actually insane. Excuse me, I was not aiming at you. I wasn't aiming at you. Dude, that's actually kind of annoying. I gotta kill these guys. Thankfully, I have a lot of arrows. Okay, one more. How did- oh, I guess he was- that's so dumb, dude. Die. Alright, I'm not gonna mess around here, because I don't want to be reset all- resetted, whatever the word is, all the way back. Oh, that- yeah, that's so scary, uh. And take these rubies. <laughs> Oh man, that damage is second to none. That's amazing. <laughs> and now, fellow friends and family, it is time for the final boss, Ganondorf. Dor Dorf. I could have easily just shot Silver Lionel infused arrows at him and won, but that's kind of boring. I wanted to actually learn his moveset, study his techniques, and beat him, you know, my way. Unless if it takes too long, then I'll just shoot him with arrows from afar. It was a strenuous battle that took me hours to fully master. I shot him with arrows on my first playthrough, so actually fighting him, I really had no experience. It took me much longer than I care to admit that depending on how he swings his sword, that's how you have to dodge in order to trigger the flurry rush. If he swings vertically, dodge to the side. Horizontal, backflip. And from here, I had a pretty good strategy. Shoot him with lino infused arrows, triggering him to attack me, flurry rush him, have him reset, and start back at square one. It's a very simple fight, it, it doesn't really require much thought, and at this point, I think it was one o'clock in the morning, so thankfully I didn't really have to use much of my brain power here, but it was fun nonetheless. When it comes to the final boss on my challenge runs, I like to let them play out, so please enjoy my fight with Ganondorf. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes sometimes the voice acting for Ganondorf is kind of funky to me. I don't know, Matt is such a great voice actor, but for Ganondorf, I don't know. I don't know if this part will be included in the video, but if it is, guys, let me know what you think about the voice for Ganondorf. I think it works, like, it's like average. Oh, yes. Spear is actually pretty easy. Oh man, you are in the perfect ruby position right now, but I'm not gonna do that. 
gonna really try to use only Lionel stuff. Come on, do things. Alright, this should trigger the second phase. Alright, perfect. Alright. Home stretch. Home stretch. Just don't do anything stupid. Well, not like... Alright, well, whatever. As long as you don't kill me in one hit, I don't really care. Oh yeah, the gloom strip. <laughs> if you're just gonna stand there and let me, ow. Nope. Come on, do it again. Ha ha ha! Excuse me. I might just end this right now. I just let me. Okay, all right. Boom. Yeah. Yes. Finally. That took so much longer than expected. Yes, we did it. Now the third phase is scripted, which is kind of funny that you acquire the Master Sword anyway for the finale. I think it's pretty cool. If you really want to be technical, no, I didn't beat Tears of the Kingdom with Lionel equipment only, considering I used the Master Sword and a bunch of rubies, but it was a really fun run to do regardless. I really enjoyed it. <coughs> and yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. <coughs> I did my best here, so... <laughs> If you have other ideas for other challenge runs, like Zonite devices only or something like that, just let me know and I'll look into it. I would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment, and if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe.